Hey everyone, and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim, and we talk about horror movies on this show. And on this episode, we are going to talk about The Eyes of My Mother, which is a all black and white film that came out just at the very end of last year. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to be one of these ones where it says it's last year, but it was really just festivals, but it came out this year. No, no that's actually it just snuck in in December uh, for a limited release. So it, it did come out in 2016. Um, and it's a black and white film. Uh, it focuses on a, a girl who... Oh, it was here as a girl and as a woman. It sort of like jumps around her life. Uh, but mm-hmm. she... Uh, something tragic happens to her mother. And she may or may not also be kind of cookie and crazy. And that's kind of what the movie's about. It's just sort of watching her weird life uh, and the mm-hmm. horrific things that that entails. It is a horror movie. I mean, I wasn't sure if it was going to be for the first like five, ten minutes. But definitely, as it kept going, it was like, okay, no, this is this is definitely a horror movie. Um, yeah. So, we'll start spoiler-free, as we always do. Um, and I'll give you some warning somewhere in the middle before we dive into spoilers. So, first things first, uh, this movie is... I mean, a lot of the movie's actually quite quiet. It's a very slow, brooding film. It likes to do the big wide shots and just let things happen. It has a lot of mm. quiet, quiet time. When there is dialogue, I'd say about half of it is in Portuguese. Uh, mm-hmm. Because the, the the you know the character's mother's uh, from Portugal, uh, and our main character Frances and Francesca speaks both uh, English and Portuguese. Uh, it's set in the U.S. though. Okay, I was actually gonna ask. I don't know if I missed it. Uh, if they ever say exactly where it's taking place. Every other character had an American accent, so, but in, including the dad, mm-hmm. the, the the dad, every character she interacts with all have American accents, so. Okay. <laughs> I, I was I was fairly certain it was set in the US. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, but so that's uh, so that's first things. Just in case you were expecting something different going into it, but um, but yeah, I've, I've basically said everything I, I suppose I want to without spoilers. I feel like we can't talk about a lot of it pre-spoilers because right. uh, I think a lot of it is just kind of. I went into this knowing absolutely nothing. I didn't know what it was about, mm-hmm. and that I just went in and kind of waited for the shoe to drop and mm-hmm. you know obviously there's a point where it does and it's like oh, okay okay this is kind of what it's about okay and we go down that, that path but tim yeah. uh, two minutes into this film i mm-hmm. i uh, thought to myself tim's going to hate the shit out of this so tim i'm <laughs> going to ask the question uh did you enjoy the eyes of my mother uh actually it, it's funny you bring that up because i was actually going to ask you what you thought uh, that i would think of this movie because traditionally uh, I feel like movies similar to this, <laughs> I've been a, a lot more against in yeah. the past. Good uh, ones, yes. Mm, that's debatable, but uh, I mean, ab- like you <laughs> said... <laughs> Hold on, I'm not done insulting you. Hold on. What one's above your IQ? There you go. Summed mm. it all up. A nice, nice, neat package for people to consume. Mm. I wish you. I wish uh, we were in the same room. I give you a nice little pat on the head, and I say, good job, and give you a little biscuit and watch you go to the corner and try to eat it. Um, but <laughs> uh, anyway, you may be surprised to know, I actually loved this movie. Um, it, I, <laughs> same as you, I thought, oh man, this isn't going to be for me. Uh, it, it is a slow burn. It's black and white. It's little artsy, fartsy, if you, you want to call it that. But I thought, Stylish. Like, the word is stylish, okay? <laughs> it's a stylish film. I found myself absolutely captivated by it. I, I thought it was beautiful and I like could not like turn away. Like I and probably the biggest praise I give, you know, to these movies is if I like don't need to look at my phone or, you know, feel bored to like go online or something while I'm watching it and from like start to finish I was just hooked on it. <laughs> I, I, I was not expecting this <laughs> I thought I was going to have to come in here and explain to you why you're wrong <laughs> and it turns out that's not the case now that's the, I mean you may have liked this more than I did Tim maybe <laughs> but, sounds of it, that, that was nothing but crushing praise I almost I, feel suffocated by the amount of praise you just threw at me I mean I don't know why I can't always explain sometimes why I like stuff but whatever it is this movie it just it looks so great I was really fascinated by the characters and I don't know, it just grabbed me. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Yeah, I hope one day, Tim, 
<laughs> when you're, you're writing your own wind vows, right? And you're <laughs> you're saying, I don't know why I like stuff, but I like you for some reason. <laughs> so let's do it. I don't know why you didn't bore me. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but I don't want to kill you. So let's uh, let's get married. Let's do it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very beautiful. I thought some of the, the cinematography, there's a lot of shots. Obviously, it's in black and white, so it's shot wide, mm-hmm. you know, which is really common there, admittedly, but like, it's just uh, these these wide black... And the reason why I can specify that is because mo- back when black and white was, like, the main thing and everyone was doing black and white, it was because it was a necessity or it was cheaper, at the very least, t- for a long time. Uh, obviously, now with uh, digital and stuff, it's like it doesn't actually mm-hmm. cost any difference to... If if it's actually more expensive to do black and white because you have to get someone who knows how to light black and white and those are fewer and further between uh, than people who just know how to light regular movies. Uh, Mm -hmm. Even uh, a bit of trivia for you, Young Frankenstein, which was made in the 70s, they had to Mm -hmm. get people out of retirement to come and light that because it was in black and white. Uh, Because lighting for black and white is different, uh, partly because certain colours look black Mm -hmm. and depending Mm -hmm. on what you'd like. So... For example, if you have a, say, a black wall, a black wall is a really bad example, but uh, mm-hmm. you couldn't have a character wearing a red shirt in front of it because the red oh, okay. red on black and white looks black. And it would oh. just... So it was like, you have to, like, you know, backlight them differently compared to... And I, I'm not saying I know how to do it because I don't, but I just know there's all mm-hmm. these differences because it shows up differently on the, on the image. Now, do you know, is there something that's, like pleasing about like to the eye about black and white uh because i don't know just something like about when you watch like a really good black and white movie that just like looks so good i don't know if there's like specific reason for that or maybe if it's like you said like when it is done well and you have the proper lighting it really like i don't know makes it pop or something true it is i I think obviously there was a time when it was just again it was just done because they couldn't do Mm -hmm. anything else and I think when you go back, and some films back then are beautiful, and some of them are. It's just kind of like, you know, obviously some of them were really well shot and look gorgeous. Some of them are like modern day sitcoms where it's just, you know, simple shots and no one, it doesn't really matter. Um, but obviously these days, if someone chooses to shoot in black and white, there is a choice. Like they're making a conscious choice to do something that's irregular mm-hmm. uh, by shooting in black and white. Um, and I, th- I think that the way I put it, like, as someone who reads comics, like, occasionally you'll get a comic that's in black and white, and it'll be a mm-hmm. cho- choice to be in black and white. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think what it does, it does a couple of things for me. One is it instantly makes the, the world feel a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Like, there's something about it to me that black and white just feels more lonely. Mm-hmm. And I think I for this film that. specifically, where it's about this girl who feels lonely out in the middle of nowhere... Mm-hmm it actually adds to that atmosphere. It feels kind of, and just a little bit surreal. Like it's not our world because our world's in color. Mm-hmm. So black and white yeah. instantly feels like there's this emptiness and loneliness to it. Uh, okay. And I, I like that. And then I think the other thing, I think the reason why it just looks good to, mm-hmm. you know, to the eye is I think there's just something so simple about boiling it down to just the shades and not having all the other stuff. Like it just, okay. it feels, st- I think that's why like noir feels kind of, I don't know. Uh, it plays with shadows more, I guess, is what I'm saying. Like, mm-hmm. it, it boils everything down to light and shadows. Whereas, you know, shadows and the color, like, depending on what the colors are, like, they may get obscured, they may not be as. Mm-hmm. Whereas here, it feels very like, you know, if you see a shadow, you, you see that line very well, yeah. and it's like everything's defined. So it's especially like effective for like horror and kind of crime noir stuff that's a little seedier, a little more. Uh, yeah, you know, I, plays in the dark and yeah, I, I think I think darker stories work wonderfully. But I, I don't think there'll be any reason, at least that I can think of, to shoot say uh, like a comedy in black and white. Yeah. Now. Like, I don't think there would be any reason to. It, it it feels like it goes against what a comedy should feel like. A comedy should feel mm-hmm. bubbly and it should feel uh, it should feel bright, where, like colorful. Yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah, horror and thriller they can be black and white or even. Like, obviously some stuff will use, like, black and white to, like, maybe say it's a flashback or something like that, and mm-hmm. they'll use it to distinguish clearly. Um, a, a good example of that's Better Call Saul, where, again, the idea of the black and white feels more lonely. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I think the scenes in black, in black and white in Better Call Saul actually benefit from that in the same way, where it, it feels lonely because of where he is in his life at that point. Uh, so, 
they're, actual te- they're not actually flashbacks technically they're not thinking about it but same difference um <laughs> but so uh so it's gorgeous there's some stunning shots mm-hmm. in this where you know like uh, I'm, I'm thinking like there's moments where like the character will open the barn and it's completely dark and there'll be light coming through the door uh stuff mm-hmm. like that um the opening mm-hmm. shot of the movie is like uh behind like the the windscreen of a, like, a big truck a big semi Mm. Um, and you just see the wind wipers going back and forth and you have, you eventually mm. see like a figure on the road uh, down the distance and you eventually get to it and that's another thing this movie does is it really plays with the time like you know it's a big long shot it takes a long time mm. and you just see it off in the distance and, you, and you're you just with it in real time getting closer getting closer and then eventually you can kind of make out you know not who because you don't really know anyone at this point it's the start of the movie but like you know what type of person it is you know are they in trouble do they, do they look like the normal did a little the heart kind of thing yeah it definitely lets like scenes breathe and it, it makes it feel more i guess kind of like organic or living where you, yeah you have stuff going on in the back a background but it's not constantly changing and you know like zooming in and doing a big tight close-up on it it's like it you know makes it feel like you're actually in the scene watching oh, yeah. it I, I think edits are inherently unnatural feeling and for some movies mm-hmm. that's fine, but for horror specifically, I feel like a lot of edits in a scary scene. This is why you know when we talk about Saw's editing and how it's like you know a million shots yeah. in about five seconds uh, to give this frantic feeling. It doesn't actually like feel that effective to me. Whereas here, a long shot where everything just happens without the camera. I mean, maybe the camera will move. Sometimes it doesn't, but maybe it'll just be slowly tracking in or whatever. But it'll be all one mm-hmm. continuous shot. It just feels a little bit more. Not even just a little bit. It feels a lot more real. It feels like yeah. there's a, a genuine quality to it. Um, and and then, one, of the thing, one of the things the movie does as well with these, whenever there's violence or you know, something, <laughs> for the first like chunk of the movie, it kind of hides all of it. It does this thing where it'll set up something violence about to happen, then it'll cut to the aftermath. And you'll just mm-hmm. see like the blood or something on the floor or something like that. Um, but as the movie goes on and we get sort of closer to the character we start to actually see the violent outbursts and stuff yeah. happening. And it, I like how it does that. Like, Because it, uh, it, it gets to a point where you're like, okay, you're going to have to start showing me it now. And it, it did. Because mm-hmm. it, it starts to like, like I say, because the scenes like are like one big long shot or something like that, and it'll take a long time building to it, it is almost this build and build and build. And eventually you have to give me the payoff. You you eventually yeah. have to stop blue balling me. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> and it, and it, it did. Like eventually it did. It, 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 it did it naturally. Like you kept getting closer. Uh, kind of like uh, I have to keep going with the sexual metaphors, but kind of like uh, you know the whole stopping thing that some people like, where you, you, you know, force stop kind of thing. Sure. But then eventually you get to. <laughs> You're trying to postpone your pleasure uh, as much as possible. Ah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, it's, I don't know if it's quite classed as like like S and M or I don't think it is, but you know, like. Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, people. And if you I, don't, I you're probably you're too young to yeah. be watching this. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to say, Tom? Uh, well, yeah, I think it's really effective. And I'm surprised more you know, horror movies don't maybe uh, take this kind of lesson. But it's always so much creepier or scarier when you're putting the scene together in your head as opposed to, yeah, just seeing it, like, flat out, right? I, I think it does good at showing you just enough um while still like you know giving you all you need to kind of like go like oh like oh no oh no they just did that or that yeah. and then yeah like you said by the end it does get more and more and shows more and stuff yeah there's a character they introduced early on and you legitimately don't know what this character's intentions are what they're there for mm-hmm. and but you start to suspect the worst you start to think oh maybe mm, but and there's a moment there's a very specific moment where it kind of gets scary Mm-hmm. in a really creepy yeah. way and I was not expecting and it was kind of like up until this point I wasn't sure how I felt yet I was like okay I don't know what it's doing yet like okay it looks pretty but like where's it going yeah. what's it doing and there's a very specific shot where I went oh I think I like this movie and I'll, I'll tell yeah. you I'll, obviously I'll, I'll keep it for spoilers because it's uh, but just I'll yeah like we'll, we'll go into more detail in spoilers but uh, the the way I was kind of thinking about it is you have that you know horror cliche of you know people yelling at the screen saying like don't do that don't go in there blah blah blah. and i I had that kind of feeling uh while watching this but in a more like realistic way where you're like uh oh like 
you, you want to tell the character like oh don't don't do that or don't let this person in but it's like um but i could also see why they would like there's not really a sense of foreboding yet like in the real life uh, of these characters but you can feel it as like a viewer yeah the camera work and the way it's been filmed is telling us more than the characters know and because yeah. of that we, we are sort of predicting things that they're maybe not yet and you you kind of get into it and like, like you say like, the idea of letting us figure out what's what's going on rather than just telling us like showing us something giving us enough and it's i mean it shows us the whole thing but you, you it's happening slowly and your mind's putting it together as you're watching it like this is what's about to, this is what this character's about to do and it builds this and it makes it more engaging because you feel like you're interacting with it because you are thinking about it and you're putting it together uh Whereas when it just quickly cuts between things and shows you, like, oh, here's what happened, very quickly. Next. <laughs> uh, you know, it's so... It's very effective. And, you know, it went it went in a place that... I mean, I, I, I mean, like I said, I didn't know what this movie was before I watched it, and I certainly didn't know where it was going to go, even once I, once I got where it started getting into the horror stuff. I'm like, okay, where's this going? What was it ultimately going to do? Um, but I, I didn't really... You know, I didn't see where the last, like, 20 minutes was going to take us at all. Like, that was a yeah. complete surprise, like, where we went down that path. Mm-hmm. Um, but it worked. It, I, I thought it was very enjoyable, very atmospheric, um, uh, very well paced, well shot. Uh, it's a short movie; it's only yeah. about an hour and sixteen minutes. Uh, which yeah, and it doesn't. It, it gets it gets going pretty much right away, and it doesn't really feel like um, it, it it's ever wasting time or anything. It it, it does feel pretty brief, um, but also, I, yeah, I feel like you know adding too much you know could have really slowed down it works really well with how much it's got yeah they don't add anything that we don't need like everything there's you know i feel like i feel like a director who didn't want to film it this way and wanted to just do it in a more traditional quick way this would be a short film that's maybe 20 minutes long but because of the shooting style yeah. because of the way it's shot and the way it lets the scenes breathe it's why it's as long as it is um but no i i would I would recommend it, um, but certainly you know what you're getting into. This is not your mainstream horror movie. This is more of an yeah. art, artful, slow-paced kind of movie. Um, now, <laughs> it's funny. Obviously, I was, I was, you know, in my head, I was kind of thinking about movies like Darling, which is was, you know, also a black and white movie about like a, a central female character. Um, mm-hmm. Very different style. That was more of a that, that wasn't as sort of long take style, but it was very stylistic in a different way. Um, mm-hmm. I would probably say I prefer that film. I think this one didn't quite hit me the way that one did. Um, or even the way the uh, girl who walks alone alone at night. But, I I got shades of that from that. From yeah, this movie. a little bit of that in there. Um, I would say that's weaker on those two, but still very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, would be my yeah. my final. Well, not final, but my my final spoiler free thought <laughs> before we. You know, what's kind of funny is um you know again not to go too much you know uh, without spoilers but i kind of feel like we're having a, a theme with some movies we're watching this year of just like what loneliness can like do to a woman like <laughs> like this is the third movie we've done about uh yeah just kind of like uh, i can't go into too much but just like that kind of theme i guess and I'm trying to think I, of I don't think too specifically. Well. Are we talking about the ones that I just mentioned, or are we talking about something this year? No, I, well, I would say yeah. Uh, from this year, uh, we had um, "Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl." Okay. Um, yeah, okay yeah. And uh, even a little bit of uh, what was the one we just did uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Black Coat Star. That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, like, I felt like you could make a similar themes between all these movies. Certainly, "Sweet Sweet Lonely Girl." I can definitely see mm-hmm. some of that creeping in here mm-hmm. um it was actually kind of surprising actually because when when the when francesca and this <laughs> goes to like she, she there's a very similar scene between between sweet sweet lonely girl and darling they all have this thing where they go and meet someone and like they bring them back to the house kind of idea um, oh yeah yeah and it, it was actually surprising to me how relatively normal the, like francesca and this was coming off like, oh, yeah. compared to the other girls in those other movies where they were immediately really weird and well this she was, mm-hmm. I mean she was a bit quiet in this but she still when she did speak it didn't sound like she was like she still felt like she was saying normal things in a normal way and it didn't strike me as, as quite as weird as yeah. those others but it was just, just as soon as you mentioned those <laughs> it kind of comparing those in my head uh, let's get some spoilers though let's do some okay. full spoilers now for uh, 
the eyes of my mother. I forgot to title the movie there. I do apologize. Um, mm. It's because I, I kept doubting myself. Like before we watched it, I was like, okay, I want to do that movie. But I, I, I literally only suggested doing this movie because it was in IMDb's, oh, you like this one? We recommend this. Yeah. And I clicked on it because I thought the poster looked good. And I, I read mm. Black and White and like a psychological and I went, oh, yeah, we're doing this time. <laughs> we're doing this. Uh, in fact... Funny now that Tim has loved it so much that uh, I remember him resisting slightly and saying, oh, great, one of these. <laughs> I admit I wasn't looking forward to it, but I was very, very surprised mm. after watching it. Mm. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's do some spoilers. So, yeah. So, I, 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 apparently the character's name is Charlie. I, I, never, I don't think I ever... Actually, let's see his name now I'm thinking about it. He, he mentions it, I, I feel like, very early on when um, the mother comes out and he's... Yeah, just kind of there talking uh, to the daughter. I, I think he mentions it like maybe once. Yeah, the daughter being Francesca. This is when she's a, a mm-hmm. little girl, uh, and we've seen our mother. Like our mother was a, a an optician, or a, sorry, not even an optician. She was a, an eye surgeon specifically, mm-hmm. uh, and she she was showing Francesca how to like take out the eye out of a cow <laughs> because yeah. that's what she learned to use, and mm-hmm. she's t- sort of like teaching her about the eye and like the, the different parts of it and all the rest of it. Anyway, so we see we see little Francesca out, outside, and this guy comes up, and he's he's like, sure. I, th- I actually thought it looked like comic books at first. I was like, is he sh- sure? Here, here's my vintage action comics number thirty two. Uh, yeah. Little girl, <laughs> you impressed? That's, that's kind of what it felt like. But you know, the mark comes out, and obviously, we're like, okay, this is a creepy guy, middle of nowhere. Well, they live mm-hmm. in the middle of nowhere. They're out in this like sort of farm, and it's like very isolated country. Yeah. That's kind of why I wasn't sure exactly. Um, where it takes place like you said yeah everyone does have like american accents but yeah i could have easily seen this as being like a very rural countryside of yeah, even, you know, even almost Fran- anywhere even francesca when she speaks in english she's got a an american accent which makes sense because she yeah. she's living here uh and grew up mm-hmm. but um so you you have this creepy guy and but honestly like i i legitimately like even though i'm suspecting okay it's a dark movie it's gonna be a horror movie like, i'm expecting some cruel intentions here but at the same time, he plays it very like he, down the line, where you can't really tell. At first, at first, of course. So yeah. obviously, eventually, it goes one way. But that, like, that's what I was kind of like alluding to earlier. Like, as a viewer, since I know I'm watching a horror movie, yeah, I, I I'm questioning everything this guy does. And I, but I feel like in real life, um, I think you would think he was a little weird, but maybe not necessarily dangerous. Like, oh. I don't really like this guy. He's a little creepy, but, you would, know, would, whatever. Would you let him in the house so he used the bathroom? In this day and age, no. <laughs> but, like, I mean, honestly, though, I, I feel like, you know, we're much more, um, we we know a lot more about, like, creepiness. And I think we're like, a little more fearful. Like, I could definitely see someone doing this, like, in the past, in, like, the 70s or 80s, you know. But, oh, well, they're a little weird, but, you know, um, do one to I others. Think, I think the argument maybe here would be that she knows there's not another house for X number of miles. True. Uh, yeah. So maybe, but then again, the argument is well, there's a forest behind you. You know, going, <laughs> you know, you've got an entire <laughs> landscape to like you know soil the ground with. You, you yeah. don't really have to use a bathroom. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, he doesn't actually say what he's. I mean, he doesn't say oh I need to take a dump. He, he says it, he wants <laughs> to use the bathroom. That could mean oh I need to wash my face or. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, get some water to take my medication. Well, there could be a legitimate reason why he needs access to a bathroom. Um, actually, the first yeah. sign for me, the first true sign for me that there was something nefarious mm-hmm. about him mm-hmm. is actually when he asked to to go in. He, I can't remember the exact phrasing, but the, the key point that I'm pointing out here is that he said he repeated a word that felt very unnatural, and because it's something you do when you're nervous and you're asking something or you're saying something that's kind of a lie. He said, uh, eh, "Could I use your bathroom bathroom for a second, please? It only take a second. Like he repeated that like mm-hmm. a second. You know, he said that twice. Which you know, it's bad English. If you if you wrote that down, uh, like yeah. back to back like that, that's just bad English because you're you're not varying your your speech enough. But when you say it out loud like that, because at least when you're you're writing like a story, if you if you're not a good writer, you know, you're in school, saying you're you're doing like mm-hmm. that's something common you might do is you might just repeat your words too much." And that's that's fine because you're 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 writing and you're trying to like do a story. You're trying to be, I don't know, witty with your words or smart with your words. Mm. But saying it out loud, you typically never do that unless you're 
either nervous because you're lying or because something else you know like mm. uh like it was just it was a sign i was like hmm he's up to something uh i think for me it might have been um maybe a little bit before that or maybe a little bit like right after but just when he when he smiles it's such a creepy like maniacal kind of smile that yeah it's it kind of set off like some bells but uh the moment I think th- uh, the moment where like the movie grabbed me though is when they go inside and he's like, like oh where's your bathroom and she points out and then she, he starts asking questions like Oh, is your is your husband uh, late? And I'm like, okay, now he's like double checking that there's a husband coming home soon. What uh, what I love is that he, I think when he was outside, he asked if there's anyone else, and she says like, oh, like my husband's gonna be home anytime soon. Uh, and then it's a great callback when he's inside and he says, I, I think he goes, is your hu- is your husband usually late? And then kind of like pauses for a second and he's like, because you said he's gonna be home any second. And then I think he kind of smiles. And he just goes like, "Oh, like he is definitely planning something." Yeah, but the moment that the moment the movie grabbed me though, mm-hmm. uh, that was building to it, but that that wasn't the moment. The moment was after. It was when he it was after she asked a couple of times to, uh, you know, she suggested where the bathroom was. She like gave him directions like three times, and then she asked him to leave when he started doing all this question. He steps up close to her, and the camera shot. He's like right in the middle of the camera frame, and he's looking basically right at the camera, and he says something like. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, I'm trying to be nice, let's do this the easy yeah. way, or I'm going to start to get impatient or whatever it was. Yeah, he wants her to show him where the bathroom yeah. is, He because he keeps saying, yeah. like, oh, where's it? And she gives him directions, and he's like, I think you should show me. But it's uh, it's, it's this framing and this smile, it mm. looks so manic. It, it, I was like, this guy could play the Joker. That's what it felt oh, like yeah. for, for this yeah. shot. It, it looked that m- just maniacal. It was, it was insane. And even his hair... I mean, felt kind of clown-like because it was kind of puffy in the sides at the top it it rem- it, it kind of looks like the um like the famous like killing joke kind of scene where he mm. he has like his hands in his hair like it, ha- it looks like that kind of style yeah i was really getting those vibes and that was kind of the it was that genuine creepiness when he was this close to the camera and smelling at me through the lens yeah. <laughs> where i was like okay right this movie's starting to grab me this is like i'm starting to feel what the movie wants to make me feel now and this is probably like all in what like the first five minutes or so like yeah five, it, maybe it, ten like i think yeah. there's there's some stuff at the start with the you know the mother teaching her stuff and like you, yeah. get, you get these kind of things but i think that's why i was really like captivated by it because it really you know it, it doesn't take a half hour to build stuff and you know it, it's just right away you have this really weird creepy guy you don't know what what's going on but it just it does such a good job just sucking you in yeah and I think I think it kept being surprising as well. I mean, at least not knowing what I'd never seen a trailer and not knowing what it was really about, it kept mm-hmm. surprising me because. So, we cut away from that to the the, the dad who's driving home, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I, by the way, I thought his introduction was really interesting. It was kind of like it was showing that he wasn't that close to the daughter because like the the mother was like showing her the cow eye and all that, and the dad kind of walks like into frame and you don't really see him. You just see the back of him and he walks out of the shot and then there's like a sort of shot of you know Fran, Francesca playing with the eye or whatever and she's focused on that but the dad's paused at the door and he's turned around and looked at her but he's out of focus it never focuses on him and it, mm. it does this job of making him feel distant like you know we, the mother's quite close to her but he's not really like they're kind of distant from each other yeah um, but it cuts to the dad in the car from, from that previous scene with the, the close ups uh, I mean he pulls out the gun of course first like there's a whole thing where he pulls out a gun and he makes Francesca sit down uh, but mm. it cuts away from that. You don't really get to see what's happening, and like the, the dad's dr- driving home, and you think, all right, he's either going to walk in, and everything's already happened, and there's like a bloodbath. Uh, probably just the mother, because I, you know, the daughter's the main character. I'm not expecting her to be dead. Maybe kidnapped, perhaps. Uh, but I'm thinking, okay, so either he's going to walk in, it's already be over, or he's going to walk in in the middle of it, and he's also going to die because he's going to be taken by surprise. Mm-hmm. Not for a second did I expect. The, the movie to be no 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 he goes in he catches yeah. him and kills him he mm-hmm. well it doesn't kill him actually sorry he he beats the shit out of him um mm-hmm. i thought he was dead because even the cut to him in the, yeah. the, the 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 tarp or whatever it was and they were dragging mm-hmm. him and they had that shot with the cameras on the tarp with them and it's like shaking and dragging along i was i thought he was yeah. dead at that point <laughs> until yeah. it got to the the next scenes obviously and i thought 
when he first comes in and you're, you're hearing like it's so unsettling you're hearing this noise uh mm. you know coming from the bathroom and, it, and at first i it's all one shot from behind him it's like following him around the house and you eventually see francesca like sitting in the the, the, the chair and she says oh he told me to sit or she says something like like that and you're just following him around the house as you hear this noise and it builds till there's eventually some like you know noises of pain mixed in with the thumping yeah, and it's, uh, I don't know about you, but actually at first I thought that the mother might still be alive, he might be raping her. Uh, um, yeah, I thought that at one point. Which, the, the noise sounded kind of sexual at one point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which, uh, sorry, I hate, I hate to bring it up, but that's like, that was the first thing that came through my mind. But then you just see, like, I, I'm not even sure maybe if that's what the dad thought was going on too, because it kind of seemed like he, you know, was, wasn't really sure what was going on. And then it, it's such a great shot of just him opening the bathroom door and you just see, yeah, like Charlie just like stabbing the bathtub. And uh, it, and it's just so good. Like, yeah, it doesn't need to focus on or do any close ups. Like, again, it's just and, like. It's, this... it's just quick. He opens the door, you see it for like two seconds and it cuts <laughs> to the next scene. And that's yeah. when he, he just lands, he lands on the, the tarp and he's been dragged and you think, oh, okay, okay. So that's where we went. And it felt like it. It like skipped a thing, and it was like, "Oh, that's how that ended." Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah. And from there, we have this this whole thing where they they keep him alive in the barn. Like he's he's in the barn, uh, chained up, but he's like screaming, you know, periodically, and all, all these kind of things. And the dad's like, he, he gets Francesca to help bury the mother. They don't go to the authorities, which you're thinking that they they probably would at this point, like you know, like whatever. Uh, if I have maybe one complaint about the movie is I really wasn't exactly sure what this motivation was. One, for not calling the cops, um, and two, for keeping this guy alive. Like, I guess maybe you keep him alive because you want to torture him or something, but... Well, that's why you don't call the cops. I mean, you can't can't call the cops and torture the, the perpetrator. I don't know. It, it seems. Well, I mean, yeah, it's true, but it's, <laughs> like, like if but, the intention is to keep him alive to torture him, mm-hmm. you can't be calling the cops for that. Yeah, but I, I don't know. That's it's. It seems like a weird step. <laughs> like well, yeah, it's I don't a weird know step, why. But like for for me, that shows you how weird this family is, and it maybe shows you mm-hmm. why she's also so weird because her dad's kind mm-hmm. of. Um, not that I think our dad was like a killer before this or anything. I, I feel like this was the first time he's done anything like this um there's something in him that this is an acceptable like, yeah thing to do so he, he, i don't think he calls the cops because I, I feel like he he feels he's taking justice into his own hands mm-hmm. uh, but he's very detached after this like he barely speaks and he just kind of sits there and uh and after the deal with burying the mother he he complains like the one thing he does say actually after that is he complains about the uh the noise like the guy charlie's screaming in the bar and Fran- Francesca is in and you don't really know where this is going she goes up to him and she's kind of like, she asks him some questions she's like oh why do you do it and he's like oh because it feels amazing and you know why mm-hmm. us because you let me in and like just all these and very creepy it's all very kind of like serial killer-esque and um, then it cut, it jumps ahead later and sort of the, the, like you know like a half an hour later whatever it would be and she's removed his eyes and uh <laughs> like you know cut his throat so he can't speak like mm-hmm. she, she she's done this and it's like holy shit the girl just like took his eyes out that is dark yeah. um <laughs> and you know at one point also he asks like you know are you going to kill me and she says no mm-hmm. you're like my only friend i was like yeah it jeez in a, <laughs> in a weird way it feels like she's not doing it to torture him but more to like keep him like yeah Oh, like I can do this, and you, so that you can stay forever, and like you know, my dad won't get mad, and people won't realize you're here, and you know, you'll just be like my friend forever. Yeah, it's really dark, and she feeds him, <laughs> and like obviously he can't speak. Like, there's this really disgusting noises he's trying to eat because he's like, you know, he's kind of, <laughs> and it's this weird thing where you don't really feel sympathy because obviously he's this vicious killer who you know, mm-hmm. you know, came out of the house and really murdered our mother for no reason. But there is a point where it's like, oh, this is really inhumane. Like, this is, like, dark as <laughs> shit. Um, which is why later on in the movie, when she starts, like, you know, doing it to someone else, it's like, oh, no, this is, you've, <laughs> like, like before yeah. I was, like, mildly sympathetic towards you, but, like, now you're <laughs> you're, you're off the deep end here. Um, yeah. I mean, she, she does keep him for a long time, at least, like, a decade. Like, because she grows mm-hmm. up, she's, like, you know, she's an adult. Her dad, uh, you know, when she's older, dies. 
So she's on her own. She's lonely. And she's crying that she doesn't want to be alone. She's, she's, she specifically mm. says that. I don't know if she says it to her dad or if she says it when she's like talking to her dead mother. Because she does that occasionally. Or she'll go out mm. to where her mother is and she'll, you know, buried and she'll like cry and be like, oh, I don't want to be alone. I'm so lonely. Mm. Um, and this is sort of where the film takes this turn where she, she kind of seeks out more people mm-hmm. because she's on her own. And she drives out to this bar. And again, it's this long shot, like uh, looking through the windscreen of the road until she like pulls in and parks. And we see her go in to this this bar and then it just cuts it cuts to like someone else sitting in the car with her uh, so mm-hmm. you know, we'll have to go through the whole process of her finding someone and she's with mm-hmm. this this girl uh who imdb is telling me is a uh, kimiko uh <laughs> but i don't think i ever <laughs> learned her name in the movie <laughs> so yeah if they say it it's pretty it must be brief yeah uh but the kind of make a spell she's like oh so so where do you live and, and she's like, it's pretty close by mm-hmm. and then i get cuts to the house she's in the mm-hmm. house and i'm like oh no you know, I mean, I didn't know her name. I, I was just like, you know, Asian girl, you better run. Like, you're in trouble here. Like, um, but she, she goes in and, you know, first of all, it is just kind of like this, they're almost like 13 year olds who like are too awkward to like talk to each other. And they're kind of like really quiet. And she's like, oh, I don't usually do this, come home with someone. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe Fran- Francesca is, is gay. It, it, although given the later scene, it seems like she's just bi or she's, you know, mm-hmm. you know, up for anything essentially. You know, it doesn't matter who it is. She she just doesn't want to be lonely, and yeah. uh, she she's making with a small talk, and you know, Kimiko's asking all these questions like you know, you know, is this your parents' house? Uh, you live here alone? Yada yada. Uh, you know, who is your mother? And she talks a lot about her fascination with the the body because her mother used to talk to her about the eyes and stuff, uh, and then the dad. And she mentions she killed the dad, and this is where this is where Kimiko <sighs> starts getting a little bit creeped out. Yes. Francesca needs to learn to lie a little bit. Well, she kind of She's... tries to backtrack, like, and it, but it takes her a while. She eventually <laughs> pretends it was a joke, but she she yeah. she, she takes it so seriously for a good couple of like mm. seconds, minutes, or whatever. And eventually, like Kimiko gets up and she's like, "Okay, it's about time for me to go." And I need to go home. And she mm. tries to use the phone. The phone's dead, and she tries to like get out. And I mean, Francesca's offering to drive her home, so it feels like she's mm-hmm. going to go along with it. And then it just, like, it cuts to her yeah. mopping up or t- scrubbing the floor. There's blood in the floor. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, Jesus Christ. Like, come on now. <laughs> yeah. And it's so, uh, it, it's so, like, tense uh, and awkward, too. Like, I feel really, yeah, bad in that scene. And I wonder, um, like, if I go back and, and actually see, like, how long it was, because it felt like it lasted so long but not in like a not in a bad way like it was like oh when is, is this it, scene gonna be it, over but you know and an like, awkward yeah, like way, a way, way cause yeah. you feel awkward about what's happening so it feels like mm-hmm. the, the pauses between the questions and the answers are lasting yeah. forever but it's just very intentional it's in a, in a, a good way and then, and then so and what probably like that is it, like, the tension's building and boiling and it's kind of this weird awkwardness and you feel like she's in danger and it just cuts to her scrubbing the floor, which obviously is a sort of almost punchline to the, what the build-up was, because like, oh, she did just kill her. But it's also very mm-hmm. cold, and it's very... Like, it just goes back down to zero. It's like, oh, this is just mundane for her. Like, this is normal yeah. she's doing this now. Um, and you don't even think about it. And it's, it's it's a good counterbalance to all the tension that was building up. Um, mm-hmm. And then she, 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 she actually brings in uh, Charlie from like the she leads him in and obviously he's blind and he can't speak so he's like just uh, he's been like and she gives him a bath potentially the first bath he's had in like 10 years and yeah. then the weird scene where i guess she, she's you know feeling the the full effect of her loneliness she she takes him up to her bed and she takes her clothes off and then you know begins an act of sex we know we cut away before we really see any of it but mm-hmm. it's like Okay, like th- this is so messed up in so many levels. Like, that this man is a serial killer who murdered your mother. You then held him captive, cut out his eyes, and you know, <laughs> like muted him for and kept him captive like a like a wild pet for yeah. years. And now, yeah, I mean, you're raping him. I, I guess, like, mm-hmm. uh, and it just like it's so messed up in so many ways. Yeah. Like, not to, like, not to mention, like, he's got to be a lot older than her now at this point, because obviously oh, yeah, yeah. he first met her as a child. So it's like, yeah, I was find it's weird. <laughs> like, hey, uh, t- t- I think the age difference is the least of the worries in this scenario. I don't know. Just saying it, just adding it on top of it. Now, I, I do kind of wonder if 
this was something specifically she wanted to do like she actually wanted to do the act or if she wanted to do this to have a baby like for that kind of companionship I don't think she was doing it to have a baby I, yeah. I know why you're saying that obviously because later on she ends up stealing a baby but mm-hmm. I think I don't think she it even... was more just the act of yeah. being that close to someone I, I think because the way I read the whole baby thing is that I don't think she even ever thought of that until it was because she says oh thank you for this gift mother or something like that uh, mm-hmm. when she, she's presented with the idea um, and I don't think she ever thought of it before that I think it was when the opportunity came knocking it was like oh this is an idea <laughs> like you know that's the way I read that scene so I think that previous sex scene was just about the sex okay. it was about feeling something and of course she wakes up in the middle of the night and she's like we've seen her like sleeping in the same bed as her father uh, mm-hmm. before and that was kind of normal and she was so she was sleeping but obviously like she just had sex with uh, Charlie you expect him to be there and I'm like is, is this a different night or is he supposed to be there and she's going to wake up and be like where is he uh, and of course yeah. that turns out to be the case and he's, he's, he's she looks outside and she's, he's running in the woods well he's not yeah. running because he can't run he's blind and he's got chains on so he's kind of stumbling forward in the woods and- this is probably my favorite shot in the movie uh when she goes out to kill him and it's just this well, one... just you're seeing everything th- through the window yeah it's and... just one long yeah. static shot behind the window although it is tracking in slowly behind the window like it is mm-hmm. a, there's a little bit of movement and yeah you just see her walk out but you can see off in the distance she has a knife in her right hand and she's mm-hmm. walking out and it, again it takes a long time for her to get to him and you can sort of see him sort of starting to turn around like he, he can hear someone's coming so he knows he's in danger Mm-hmm. and she gets she gets up and she does start to stab him and i think what i like about this you know on top of just how beautiful the shot is and how sort of uh creepy the whole thing is is just how pathetic he is like in this like last moment of his life where he's oh, yeah. he's trying to stumble blindly away in his underwear with chains on as if he has mm-hmm. any hope of actually getting like even just this chance of getting away is worth a, an attempt for him. Yeah. It's just there's just there's something so pathetic about it on top of being, you know, scary and mm-hmm. creepy and cruel. E- even if he you know, you know, arguably he deserves some of it. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. I mean like at this point though, it's like this has been ten years of being held captive like it with nothing to do. It's not even like he can watch T V while he's in his yeah. his barn. He's just lying there in pain all this time. Yeah. So uh, Yeah, and like uh, he's like an awful person, but yeah, in a weird way you do kinda like feel bad for him I, I don't know it's a it's, it's kind of a sticky situation also but, she, keep, she keeps body parts in the fridge by the way she cuts them up and keeps oh, parts yeah. of them in the fridge <laughs> and p- possibly eats them uh, at the very least maybe feeds them back to him at least before this anyway uh, yeah I, I don't think it ever made it clear that she's a cannibal or not it seemed like she may be just keeping them for other reasons yeah it's hard to tell i'm yeah. not sure i'm not sure but uh yeah so, so then she says this whole thing where she sort of praise to her mother for like oh it's nice. mm-hmm. you know i'm so lonely i don't want to be alone anymore and like well stop killing everyone you come in contact with thing, you <laughs> stupid bitch uh but she's, so she's out in the woods she's she's stumbled out and this car comes by again it's this big wide shot you just see the truck come in and you see her get in the car from a distance obviously they've offered her a ride oh do you live near here i'll take you home uh, and obviously we should mention at this point there's title cards like there's three sections in the movie it comes up mm-hmm. at the start saying one mother and then just before the father dies, two father, and uh, for and but when the father died in the second part, I'm like, okay, these title cards refer to who's going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the the third title card, the final one, was family. Mm-hmm. And so obviously, I'm like, oh god, like, like <laughs> you know, like because uh, I, I think the title card comes up after she gets in the truck, be, before we cut inside the truck. Well, you see mm-hmm. the big wide shot. She gets in the truck. It's coming up saying the family. And then it cuts inside, and it's a mother and a, a baby. And I'm like, holy shit. Uh, <laughs> and what, what I like about this, actually... Oh, by the way, uh, just to mention, when she was stabbing uh, Charlie, and it does go out mm-hmm. to like, a close-up, and she's sort of hugging him as she does it, she says, you were right, by the way, it does feel amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, she says it in Portuguese, so I don't even know if you understood that. But, yeah. uh but hey. So, <laughs> but again, it's this cyclical feeling, because hard with the... Because it, when they, they part the car... They've had some small talk, but when they part of the car, she's like, oh, can I hold the baby? And she's like, oh, go on, just just one minute. Uh, and the mother's like, okay, sure, there you go. Like, hold his head. 
Um, yeah. And it's funny because it feels really reminiscent of like the first scene with the mother uh, and that, Charlie. That's what I was saying. Yeah, it's it's yeah. A cyclical. Like it comes back around. She's mm-hmm. doing the same thing, except in this case, uh, like maybe she gives in a little bit easier because, and this is just a sort of natural thing that it, you know a woman is less intimidating. Like it doesn't yeah. necessarily feel like as as threatening as like this creepy guy who comes in the house. Mm-hmm. Um, especially since they've already been in the car for a little bit. She's given her a ride home. Um, but of course, immediately she like you know she runs in the house with it, and the mother like comes screaming after her, trying to get in. Uh, yeah. And you can sort of see where this is going to go. Like she's 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 running about the house trying to find her child. Uh, when she mm-hmm. once she gets inside, and then she sees she sees the baby on the bed, and then up comes Francesca from behind and just you know slot the slots the knife in. Yeah, I actually thought this was probably like the most the hardest scene to watch in the movie like i found this like a lot more disturbing than like the you know like the actual killing people and stuff like just the idea of you know it's such a young child and someone just like so frantically like running away um and and again everything's like played out very you know it's not like over the top it it seems Mm -hmm. like very you know realistic um and again so comparing really it again cool. to that opening scene or not the opening scene but the scene with uh, Charlie mm-hmm. like this is the same thing like she's killing the mother and I'm she didn't actually kill her quite yet mm-hmm. but she's she's killing the mother and like potentially stealing the child like because he wasn't going to kill or at least it didn't seem mm-hmm. like he was going to kill Francesca maybe he would, would have but like it feels mm-hmm. like it's a very similar incident that, that happened before and now she's yeah. the culprit uh, like like it's almost like uh the title, the father, was it even referring to her actual father? You could almost argue it's referring to him because he's inspired yeah. all this, even though, like, you know, what, what position was he in to be a father figure? Like, beyond, mm-hmm. you know, pa- yeah. planting the seeds of the ideas maybe in her head. Uh, but, it, like, really good stuff. But then she keeps her, she keeps the mother who's still alive. She takes out her eyes. She can't speak. So you feel nothing but sympathy for her. Like, she's just an innocent victim. And she's mm-hmm. chained up and all that. Uh, and then we actually find out another time jump happens. Mm-hmm. And she's with uh, the, the kids, like now, like like eight or ten or whatever age he is. Yeah. And you know, what, one of the things I love about this movie is I don't think there was any point where I really saw what was going to happen. Like, like I, like all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> it, yeah, like it, it jumps in t- forward in time, and I don't know how old the kid is, like five or six or something, but it's like, oh, like she's like raising this kid now. I was like, oh, okay, wow, I like. At no point did I really think, though, this is where the movie's going. Um, yeah, no, I, I think you can predict it within the scene. That you can see where the yeah, scene's yeah, yeah. going, but you can never mm-hmm. really feel like you know where the whole story's going. Um, but the kid like never noticed there was someone in the barn before, and he starts asking questions, and uh, he, he sneaks in there at night. And it's this really sad thing where the mother can't see him, but she can hear someone's there, and you get this real sense, this feeling that she knows it's him. That it's her mm-hmm. child that's in the room with her, and he he gets scared and runs away, but eventually he goes in again, and it leads to her escaping. Like, uh, and Francesca doesn't know about this until the next day. She gets up in the morning, she sees that the doors open. She walks into the barn, and the camera never goes in the barn. We stay outside, but we just hear her scream when she goes inside, and that actually comes back to the opening shot of the movie, which is a uh, the, the truck driver. It's, it's it's actually this this mother that he sees. Uh, stumbling down the road, blind with chains on and falling to the ground. And... Which, like, up until this point, I had almost completely forgotten about that opening scene. Yeah, meet me as well, because there's so much else going on that you just you forget that that's kind of... Because you, know, you never see her close enough in the opening scene to, like, see that she's got, like, a bandage over her eyes yeah. to, like, connect all those other little dots that, you know, make her the same as the previous victim. So, yeah. like, you know, you have all those things, but... Uh, it, so you have that, and, like, she realises that, like, the police are coming back to the house, and the movie ends with her run into the house, getting a knife, like sit, standing in front of her baby or her child, so that she's a, you know you know forcibly adopted. And obviously the kid doesn't know this. Like the kid's like just you know thinks that's his mother. Yeah. And she's like, no matter what they say, never remember you know what, what I meant to you. Like you know I'm I'm mm-hmm. your mother. Blah blah blah. And you know it ends with like the police coming in, and you just like it cuts. You know you hear shots. You see you hear the shots. You just see the outside of the house, mm-hmm. and that's the movie. That's that's the the wrap up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, I, I, I described the whole plot there. I don't know if I was intending <laughs> on doing that, but I, it just... Well, I, I think, like, it's, like, each, like, scene or, you know, if you break it up into segments or whatever is so specific, I feel like it kind of warrants to go 
it, pretty it much through the whole movie. Because it, it keeps showing in places that are unpredictable. I did, I did not expect it to jump ahead in time again after mm-hmm. it, she got to adulthood. And I certainly like didn't expect it. Like I, I had no idea this was going to be about her killing and like kidnapping people. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't even know that at the start of the movie. Mm-hmm. So, um, like like I say, I I I almost thought like the dad was going to get killed as well, and then it was going to be just her and the the killer, and the killer was maybe going to raise her or something. Or, um, but like I actually I like the title now that I know that the like the mother like taught her how to take out eyes. Like the whole idea mm-hmm. of the eyes of my mother uh, has a a completely different meaning to it now <laughs> than what it does before. Yeah. So. That's pretty cool. Um, like I said, very stylistic. Uh, all, all these long brooding shots, letting things breathe, letting things happen in the frame. Um, mm-hmm. It's that idea where you're waiting for the thing to happen. And some people think that's painful and boring. I don't. I love it. I, I love getting a shot of just like an empty room and wondering, okay, why are we getting a shot of an empty room? Something's going to happen. You know, yeah. you know you're, you're predicting it. You start to think about it. What's happening? And I mean, I think definitely in the wrong hands, it can be pretty painful. But oh, in this sure, case, yeah. it was, I, I feel like everything was just handled so well and the shots all looked so good that even if it was slower and you had to be a little more patient, I thought it was worth it because, you know, it, it looked so good and the payoff was great. And yeah, so, yeah some, I, some of the shots in this you could print out and put in the wall. Well, that's yeah. how good some of this looked. Uh, the, like, the, the scene I mentioned where the, the, the sun is like, in the barn with the, you know, the mother with the, you know, she's chained up, she can't speak, she's got the bandage over her eyes, and she's sort of reaching out for him. Yeah. Um, like, she's, like, behind her, there's nothing but darkness, and she's reaching out, and he's, like, at his back to the camera, so you just see, like, the, the silhouette of him, almost, like, the outline mm-hmm. of the light hitting him, and she's, like, reaching out into the light, and it's just, it's this really sad but horrific image, and, like, yeah. this, there's a lot of shots like that where you just, like, you can appreciate just, like, that's why I almost, like, it hit, like, it, it's never tedious that it's taken a long time because the shots themselves are always so beautiful. Yeah, and it's it's so weird that, like, the movie, it looks so beautiful, but it's one of the, like, grossest, most disturbing stories. Like, everything about the, the story is unsettling, but visually, it all looks so good. Yeah. Uh, I, again, maybe that, you know, those two things like counteract each other. I mean, it's one thing to make Texas Chainsaw and have it be grainy and grimy and look disgusting, mm-hmm. uh, but it's another thing to say, "Oh, this looks normal," but there's something yeah. horrific happening beneath the surface, and uh, that mm-hmm. that can be a very, very valid way of doing one of these things. So, um, clearly, we recommend it. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> we've been, you know, we went through it and talked about uh, mm-hmm. you know characters and stuff and shots and all the rest of it. Um, and obviously, again, it's, a, it's the main character, Francesca. It's all about her feeling lonely and being very messed up because this incident. I mean, I get the impression she was already a little bit weird because she was lonely and there was maybe no other kids around. But certainly, yeah. this incident of him coming in and like killing her mother uh, oh, yeah. is like a big factor. Uh, but <laughs> to be fair, she starts like she she immediately takes it. It's like, it's like the next night or something like that where she does take out his eyes, and her mm-hmm. reaction when she's like sitting in the chair and the dad comes in is very, like, non-emotional. You almost get the sense that there was already something there. Uh, yeah. You know? Um, and the story the mother tells at the start about, you know, loneliness can make the mind go mad. Uh, mm-hmm. And the eyes are a big part of that. You start to see things differently, uh, which is really what the movie's about. Like, it's her seeing the world differently to everyone else. Um, yeah. So, no. Uh, I, I, I would recommend it. I think it's a solid watch, especially since it's so goddamn short. And yeah. it's beautiful and all these things. Uh, yeah, and uh, right now it's streaming on Netflix, so it's it's easy to watch too. Hmm. Uh, so with that said, I guess we'll mm-hmm. uh, do some ratings. Tim, how, what's, what's your rating for this? Uh, I'm kind of dancing between like an 8 and an 8.5, but I don't know. The, the more I think about it, the more I really like it. So uh, you know, sometimes a little hesitant to give you know a newer movie too high of a score, but I don't know. I think I am going to go 8.5 on this one. Okay, uh, I'm going to land at a solid eight, and the reason why it's not going higher for me is, like I say, compared to similar movies, like I think they grabbed me a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think, and I think the reason for that is that I think the character of Francesca herself, I don't mm-hmm. think, was as interesting as some of those other characters. Like there was maybe, uh, I don't know. Like it's hard to explain, but it just for whatever reason. 
she wasn't quite as fascinating as like Darling was in Darling. Uh, oh, that was I mean that was her name, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been awesome to watch it now. Yeah, I think that was her mm-hmm. name. Um, yeah, see, it, it's kind of funny because it's like the opposite for me. Uh, I, again, like, I can't really rightfully explain it e- either. Why, for some reason, the characters stood out more for me than some of the other ones we watched. But yeah, something about it maybe yeah made me a little more interested than some of the other ones we watched that were similar to it. I, th- I think I think the difference between them actually is that Darley makes you feel like you're inside the character's head, whereas mm-hmm. this one it feels that like you're this weird distant viewer watching the I events unfold. That. Um, yeah. and I think the other, I think Darling feels a bit more visceral because of that, whereas this feels a lot more, uh, uh what's the word? Um, voyeuristic. That's a good word. That's a good mm. word. Voyeuristic is a very good word. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it definitely feels a bit more like that, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, there's definitely yeah. films that I like a lot like that, and I like this a lot. It just uh, comparing it to that, uh, that's where I'd probably probably land. So. Uh, hey, it may go up in time, but at least on this first viewing, I'm going to I'm going to settle on a solid date. That's fair. So there you go, there you go. As uh, the eyes of my mother, um, let us know what you thought of the movie in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreoncom slash TV. You can get some bonuses over there, including being able to vote on an episode every month. Uh, the current vote is all Stephen King movies because it's coming out next month, <laughs> so you can check out that. Uh, otherwise, guys, and pardon me for um, uh, losing it here towards the end of the show, <laughs> but we're near the end. I feel like you know I'm I'm already I'm basically mm. halfway to bed already. I'm just kind of <laughs> going through the motions here for the, the outro. Uh, mm. But no, all of that, guys. Uh, thank you once again for watching. Uh, we appreciate it a lot. It always helps us out. So thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Keep watching movies. Goodbye.